Let's move to alkoxides now, which are the conjugate bases of alcohols. These are fairly strong Bronsted bases in their own right. They're sort of in the middle, in the grand spectrum of organic bases. And they're quite good nucleophiles. Essentially, they're amped up alcohols, right, with the negative charge. So the first thing we should really always watch out for when dealing with alkoxides is proton transfer. These are solid bases, and so they can deprotonate a wide variety of organic acids as long as the thermodynamics work out, of course. And the idea here is that this is a simple proton transfer step in which the base is the anionic oxygen atom and the acid is some hydrogen whose associated pKa is, remember, less than 15, as we worked out in the acidity and basicity video. And the resulting products are the neutral alcohol with now an intact neutral hydroxyl group and the conjugate base of the starting acid. And so alkoxide bases can be used to generate a wide variety of nucleophiles in organic reactions. And we'll see this used in cases when this conjugate base is relatively stable. This will often turn into a nucleophile in a subsequent elementary step. And so this proton transfer from an acid to an alkoxide is important to keep in mind. Alkoxides are also great at SN2 substitution, provided the electrophile is cooperative. For example, if we take an alkoxide and we treat it with ethyl bromide. Bromide is a good leaving group. An SN2 elementary step can occur here, and this is an N to sigma star elementary step, non-bonding lone pair on the oxygen overlapping with the sigma star carbon bromine orbital. And the resulting product here is a neutral product in which the oxygen now has two bonds to carbon groups. This is called an ether, and we'll talk about ethers in more detail later in this unit. And of course, the bromide, which departed as a nucleophuge, is generated as well. Classic example of an SN2 step and a classic synthesis of ether is called the Williamson synthesis, which we'll see a little bit later. Like neutral alcohols, alkoxides can add to polarized pi bonds, such as carbon-oxygen double bonds. But unlike the neutral alcohol case, alkoxides are intrinsically strong enough nucleophiles as a result of their negative charge that they can add into neutral carbonyl groups. The intermediate resulting from this, in contrast to the previous example with neutral alcohols, is now negatively charged, and the negative charge resides on the former carbonyl oxygen. We also see alkoxides that are embedded in more complex structures engaging in beta elimination. And here again, this isn't strictly a step that involves an alcohol functional group, as there's almost always a heteroatom bound here, but nonetheless, because it involves an embedded O-, I thought it was useful to include it here. So for example, a structure like this contains non-bonding lone pairs on the alkoxide oxygen in a beta position relative to chlorine, which is a good leaving group. This arrangement of a good nucleophilic lone pair adjacent to a good nucleophuge is exactly what we need for a beta elimination elementary step. And after that occurs, we end up with products containing a new carbon-oxygen double bond as well as the conjugate base of the leaving group, Cl-.